Hi, my name is Troy and I'm the director of Troisky Limited. And today I'm going to do a very quick video on installing uh, Ubuntu Server um, using VirtualBox, which is running on my MacBook Air. It's a very modest MacBook Air, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> we've just got a 1.8 GHz Intel Core i5 with 8 GB of RAM going on. Um, and I'm running uh, the latest version of Mac OS X, uh, which is 10.10.4. I have uh, downloaded Oracle's VirtualBox, and that's at the latest version currently. Um, and I've also downloaded the Ubuntu uh, ISO, uh, which is in my downloads folder here. It's the 14.04.2 server uh, ISO. Uh, so let's create a new virtual box. We're going to call it Ubuntu Server Minimal. And the reason I'm making it minimal is because I'm going to use this to clone other servers and add to the software um, as I need to. I don't want to create a big Linux uh, image with every known bit of software um, if I'm not ever going to use it and you know it also um, creates some security concerns um, if stuff's running uh, when it shouldn't be and doesn't need to. So we can see um, when I've put in Ubuntu in the name, it's already recognized that it's Linux and it's going to be Ubuntu 64-bit and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to click on continue. Uh, and now it's asking me uh, my memory size, which I'm going to leave at 512 meg. Since this one won't actually be running, we'll only really need enough memory to get the install working. Any clones we make from this, we can increase as is necessary. So we'll click continue on there. Now we're going to create a hard drive, a virtual hard drive for this guest. Um, I'm happy with eight gig, we don't need any more than that. And we'll say, uh, let's create this uh, the virtual hard drive now. On our next screen, um, it's asking us what type of uh, drive file type we want. I'm gonna leave it as VDI. I have no reason to change that for this. And I'm gonna say, um, let's leave it dynamically. Uh, allocated. Um, since it's dynamically sized, um, I doubt we'll use 8 gig anyway, so it means we'll only use what we need to. Let's press continue. Um, I'm going to leave the file location and size exactly um, as the default, and you can see now we have created um, a new guest called Ubuntu Server Minimal. Um, I'm now going to uh, give it some network interfaces um, and configure those and uh, mount the ISO to it. So at the moment we could see the specifications of our, of our guest here. Um, it's got one adapter already connected to it. We don't have to play around with any of these other settings um, for this. I'm just going to hit the settings key. I'm going to go straight to storage. And here we can see in our storage tree that we've got a like a virtual SATA uh, <clears throat> adapter, which is where our disk, our virtual disk we just created is seated. And there's also um, a, an IDE controller here uh, with a CD icon currently showing as empty. So I just need to mount our ISO on there. To do this, I click this uh, uh, CD icon um, to the right of the, the DVD drive dialog. And I can choose a, a virtual disk drive. You can see my Ubuntu ISO is already in the list. That's because I've already used this before. But if I clicked uh, choose a virtual disk drive, I could then use the downloads dialog to select my Ubuntu image and click open. Um, you can see now that where it said empty before, it now says Ubuntu, uh, which is all good. Um, let's go on to network. So as I mentioned before, we have we, we can have up to four adapters on here, and the first adapter is already filled out for us. Um, 
I'm going to change this uh, adapter one. I'm going to actually make a bridged adapter, and I'm going to bridge it to my Ethernet port, uh, which is connected to my local LAN here. And that could be bridged to um, your airport, your Wi-Fi if you want. Um, I'm going to leave it at USB for the purposes of this, um, and it's enabled. Adapter two currently isn't enabled, but I'm going to enable that. And then I'm going to say choose internal network. And you'll see by default it's um, using this internet name. You can call this whatever you like. And just as an exercise, I decided to create an internet one. Um, and we'll leave it at that. We're not using DHCP um, for this. So, and as far as this server is concerned, anyway, it's. Um, it's going to be used to clone, um, so I can change that later if I need to. So I'm going to click OK on that, and now I'm going to start this guest. If I click the Start button, you'll see uh, VirtualBox starts its own BIOS, and we've immediately got our Ubuntu uh, installation dialog. I'm happy with English. And I'm going to say install Ubuntu server from our menu here. We'll let that boot it to its uh, installation kernel. We won't worry about those mount errors there. And we're going to choose uh, the English language. And I'm going to change this to United Kingdom. And here we can mess around with the keyboard settings as well, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. And I'm, and I'm going to choose English UK and I'm going to choose uh, UK Macintosh because I'm using a Mac keyboard. So now it's um, detecting the hardware. This shouldn't take long because I'm running a MacBook Air, so it's all running on SSD. It's nice and quick. Okay, so now it's uh, reading the software off the ISO and loading some of those additional components into the uh, installation routine, which we were going to use to install Ubuntu. We'll detect some hardware again. Okay, so now it's detected I've got more than one interface. Um, and I'm going to choose the first interface, uh, ETH0, as my primary interface. This is the one that's bridged to the outside world, so it would be good to use this. Um, VirtualBox um, will be running a, running a DHCP server on here, so it will automatically get an IP address. So let's press enter on that. Here it goes to pick up my IP address, which is successfully done. And I'm going to call this Ubuntu-minimal. This is the host name for this server. I'm also going to add my domain name on here, troisky.co.uk, a bit of shameless promotion. And I'm going to say continue. So with Ubuntu, um, there's a layer of, of security um, which means that you don't normally log straight in um, to this server as a root. You normally go in as a user first, um, and then you sudo to, to the root user. So I'm just going to um, put my name in here, my full name, and then continue. And then here's my uh, username. I'm going to change that to Toysky and continue. Now I'm going to put in a, a password for this. Twice. It's moaning that it's a very weak password, but this is for demonstration purposes, so I'm not that bothered. I'm going to say yes, you can use that. And then it's asking me if I want to encrypt my home directory. There's no need for me to do that, so I'm going to say no. Uh, of course, if you're doing this in a corporate environment, you may well want to encrypt that, depending on your security policies. 
So now we're going to configure the clock. Um, it's detected I'm um, Europe London, which is absolutely right. I'm going to say that's correct. It's detecting my disks. Okay, so this is where we partition the disk. Um, I've only got one disk. I don't need to do anything fancy for this particular minimal server. Um, if I wanted to do things like mirroring, um, this is where I could potentially do it. Um, if I'm in a corporate environment, I may well have something like Veritas Volume Manager to do all that sort of clever stuff. So I'm going to, for the purposes of this, I am going to say use the entire disk. There is only one disk there that it can see. Uh, it says it's an 8.6 gig, so that's fine. I'll have that. And it's going to automatically configure a partition with ext4 and a partition uh, as swap. So I'm quite happy to write the changes. Let's say yes. And now it's copying the system software, the, the, the server software itself, um, onto that virtual disk. Again, it's nice and quick because this is all SSD. configuring some Linux kernel stuff. Now it's doing some extra files and post installation routines. Okay, so now it's asking me if I need um, to tell it about a HTTP proxy to access the internet. Um, there isn't one for this. It, it, it is bridged to the to the Ethernet, which is connected to the Internet. So that's fine. I can leave that blank. Say continue. Uh, so it's configuring um, apt-get, which is the um, uh, software it uses to install um, software. Um, so it's uh, going and checking for updates, uh, updates to its uh, libraries so it knows where everything is uh, and has an up-to-date list of all the software that's available so again it's installing configuring and upgrading software um, here we can select whether we want um, to how we want to manage our updates on this particular server. Um, I'm going to say no automatic updates. Um, when I clone this, I might change that later. Now here we've got some server software that we can select. Um, I need SSH. Um, definitely so I'm going to leave that in there um, all the rest of them I'm going to leave out um, I can always add these later to a cloned version of this server but this is a minimal install so that's all I need for now so let's do some more software installs and configurations
Okay, so it's doing some clear up routines as it comes to the end of the installation phase. Now it's configuring Grub, which is what it uses to boot um, into Linux when we run it. Um, it's uh, suggesting that this is a new install, which it is, and asking me if I'm okay to install the Grub, loo Grub loader to the to the MBR, the, the master boot record. I'm going to say yes to that. So now it's telling me the installation is, is complete um, and to take the uh, CD out of the drive. And there isn't a CD, it's all virtual and you can see um, down here that the uh, icon is greyed out for the CD which means it actually has already uh, unmounted that image. So I can just hit continue um, and it will do some more cleanups uh, and then reboot the guest. So this is it coming up for the first time. It's got a grub menu and it's booting into uh, our installation uh, of the Ubuntu server now. We've effectively now finished with the, uh, the ISO file and I should be able to log in here at the username that I set up earlier on. It says welcome to Ubuntu gives me some system load information um, and I should be able to sudo to the root user and the root user password is the same password as the one I entered for my own user so now you can see I have root everything's good in the world top works um, and we have uh, sorry I should use the update commands and we should have an IP address for ETH0, which is 192.168.0.36, uh, which is uh, what's been given to it by the DH, DHCP server that uh, VirtualBox is running. And if I start a terminal session, I should be able to SSH to that. I'm going I'm to put Voice key in because I can't log in as a root directly at 12168. I've got my IP address already. 036. 036. It's the first time I've connected to it, so it's asking me if I want to continue connecting so I can install the fingerprint. I'm going to say yes. It's asking me for the password. And there we go. There's our SSH connection into that server. And again, we should be able to do the same to switch to the root user. Everything's good. We can shut that guest down. And now that that server is ready to be cloned. Um, I'm going to leave the video there at this point and uh, do another one later on, on cloning.